So in the previous video, we set up an editor utility widget that is going to take a texture that's fed into it and generate extruded geometry. So what I would like to do is set up a procedural approach to the same thing where we can select a few things and then it'll just run on each one automatically. First thing I'm gonna do is duplicate the editor utility widget, with control D. We'll rename this one extrude, pop it over here and let me run it. So there you got that. Okay. First thing we're going to do once we've got the new editor utility widget is we're going to create a new function up here. We're going to call it extrude mesh. And into that function, we are going to put all of the stuff here associated with that extrusion operation. So I'm going to control C and control V to copy and paste. Plug it in there. So into this, we're going to need to feed the texture. And if I mouse over this, you can see that it's expecting a texture 2D object reference. This is our applied displacement texture node. So down here in the input section of the function, if you don't see that, just make sure you've got the function selected. We'll make an input called texture, and it will be of type texture2d. And from there, we can plug it directly into that slot. And just to keep things nice and clean, I'm just going to bump it up. Okay. So now we've got the texture input. We are going to be returning a target mesh. So we need to come back over and add an output over here. It'll be the extruded geometry. So I'm going to call that one output mesh and we'll set the object type to dynamic mesh. And here you see, we get that little uh, return node. Scoot it all the way over. And then plug the target mesh into the output mesh. We'll do a compile and a save. Go to the event graph. And now we can select all of this and delete it. Let's scoot this over there. And then grab our extrude mesh function. Drop it in. We've got our output mesh, which you can plug into the input mesh of our save dynamic mesh function. So now we need to figure out how to get the texture that we can feed in here. So I'll just grab one for now. So we have two options here. We have get selected assets, which is going to be whatever you have selected in there. It's going to return that. And then there's going to be a get selected assets of class. So in this case, we could just come over to the class and type in texture 2D. And we would know that everything that was being piped through here was a texture 2D object that we could then feed in here. But sometimes you might want to have different kinds of operations, like if it's a texture 2D, we're going to do this. And if it's a static mesh, we'll do this and blah, blah, blah. So what we need to do here if you're using a get selected assets node is we've got to cast it to the class that we want. And if the cast is successful, then it is the type of object that we're looking for. So I'm going to pull off here and we'll type in for each, which is how we iterate over the selected array, the list of our objects that's selected here in the content browser. The blue thing here is going to be the thing that we have selected. And you can see it's an object reference, but we're looking for a texture 2D object reference. So if you try to plug this in, it's going to say no way. So scoot this over. So we're going to pull off and type in cast to texture 2D. So our loop body, anything that we have in our loop body is going to be done to everything in our list. So if it is successful, our cast operation is successful, this is going to get executed 
And if it fails, this is going to get executed. Now, you don't have to attach anything to this if you don't want to, or really either one of them, but you should at least have one of them plugged in. And then as a texture 2D, now we can plug in this. Okay, so let's go ahead and hit compile and save. So with one thing selected, let's go ahead and run this. And as you can see now, we are grabbing that texture and effectively piping them through. Now, what's going on is we're just overwriting our tet mesh, which is not actually going to work for us long term because it's ultimately going to result in just one thing. We need to modify this code so that we're not setting some path at the outset and then just overwriting the same file here in our saved dynamic mesh function. We need to be updating this based on whatever the name is of our selected texture. At least that's how I'm going to do it. So let's go ahead and add a new function here. I'll call this one generate path. And what we want is we want to get the path of the object. So if you mouse over this thing here, it's going to at the very top there, it's going to give you the path and it's going to be forward slash game, blah, 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 all the way to textures, which is the name of the folder that this thing is in. And the way that the path stuff works, like anything in the content browser is going to have paths. So you don't have to specify that it's like a texture 2D or a static mesh or whatever, right? It's, it's, a, it's all a subclass of a thing called object and the functionality to return the path name lives on object. So I'm going to make an input argument here, and it's just going to be of, of type object, because I don't really care to specify that it's one thing or another. So we'll call it object and set it to object. And then off of here, we want to get the path. So if you type in path, scroll down a bit, here at the bottom, you're going to get this uh, get object path string. And that's going to return a string, which is this pink thing. We can pull off of that and type in print. It will print the string. So for now, let's just do that. Let's just take a look at what happens with this. So I'm going to go to the event graph. We're just going to scoot this over. We'll grab generate path, drop it in. So texture2d is a subclass of object, so that will be a valid input. And so long as I have something selected here in the content browser, it's going to go ahead and print the path. In fact, if I select all the things in the content browser, it should go ahead and print them all, right? Okay. So that's us iterating over all of our selected assets there. Cool. So this is the full path and you can see it's got this extra dot and then like the, like between the, the file name, which is duplicated. So let's go back over to generate path. So from path or from object path string, you can just type in get path. And we'll save it. Run it again, and it's going to be just the paths minus the file names. And we can also do file name. And what we're looking for is get base file name. And we can plug that in there. And you can see it's just the file name without the dot and then the extra copy. So the next thing that we can do off of this is a replace. This is just a common string operation. So what we want to do is we want to replace it from capital T to capital SM for static mesh. So we'll do T underscore to SM underscore, whoops. We can clear that, run it again. Okay, so this is the new file names. Wonderful. And now we're going to come over and do an append. Append just means put things together. So there, we'll add a forward slash. We'll add an extra pin. We'll grab the output of this and plug that in. And this is the new file path for each of our eventual static meshes. 
So we don't need to print it, we want to return it. So we'll scroll down a little bit to outputs. We'll add an output. We'll call it file path and it is of type string. Whoops, not name. Try that again. Great. Okay, so there's extrude mesh, event graph. So into save dynamic mesh, now what I want to do is we can add an input. And we'll call it file path, and you can see it's already set to string, which is convenient from our, I think our previous operation. And we just plug that directly into our create new static mesh. So that will be the new path of our static mesh. Go back to the event graph. Keep it somewhat organized. We need to plug our texture 2D into our texture input of extrude mesh. Let's go ahead and compile and save. Clear this. Let's select one and see what happens. Cool. Well, let's select them all and see what happens. And I'm going to reduce this down so that it goes a little bit faster. Cool. All right. Success. So there you go. Uh, and also now we have a nice clean graph. We have some organized functions. It wouldn't be a bad idea to come in and, you know, if you were expecting somebody to come in behind you and maybe add some comments, you can highlight nodes, tap the C key, get a little comment box, sort of talk through what it is that you have done with whatever the uh, whatever the notes there are. All right, cool. So in the next one, I think we'll probably do, uh, there's like one more little thing I'll talk about, which is sampling the surface of a piece of geometry and then creating new geometry that is oriented to that surface. And then after that, I think we're going to do a little bit of instant static mesh stuff. So there's all kinds of cool things. So stick around, see you in the next one.